Uh, and then you have kind of Pastor Frank Allen's story, some of the things he's been through, and he sent that to us so that uh, uh, we who are a part of their missionary efforts uh, would be able to have some information on that as well. So it's good to be able to see that. It's good to see you here this morning. A lot of great things going on. I'm grateful that you were able to pull in on the parking lot without slipping and sliding and ducking and dodging and all that other kind of stuff. The other day, several of us were out here slipping and sliding and doing all kind of stuff in the parking lot and found out that the uh, mute, that the, uh, um, they knew who that was towards, um, but found out that, man, it's just really hard to uh, do a whole parking lot with shovels and all that stuff. Well, uh, uh, Shorty Castaneda, we call him Shorty, his name is Pompeo, but uh, lives right down the street there. He was out here working. Actually, when I pulled up this morning, uh, he was already in the parking lot. Now, I get here early on Sunday mornings, and he was already out there, and he was shoveling more snow. I said, bro, what are you doing? And he said that he wanted some things to look a little bit more perfect than they looked. And I said, bro, it looks great to me. But through his connections, uh, he got the whole parking lot cleared off yesterday. It took him a few hours to do it, got it cleared off at no cost to this church. And uh, we are grateful um, uh, for that. You know, even at the, at the cheapest side, you know, $75 an hour uh, for three and a half to four hours of clearing, uh, it, it, it adds up. And so we're grateful uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that he uh, gave us favor and uh, brought about that blessing. John chapter 15 is where we're going this morning, and I will ask you ahead of time to throw your seatbelt on. Um, lock it and get it in place because uh, we're going to take a little bit of a ride today that will challenge you it might even make you mad and that's okay i can handle that um you don't intimidate me nobody's anger bothers me or scares me so uh that's fine you know it's all good with me some of the gentlemen are specifically will probably get upset with me and that's all right you can get over it uh, as uh, I'm going to share some things that is probably going to shoot down some of the things you do for your ladies. Yeah, sorry to tell you that. Uh, I wasn't... <laughs> well, I'm glad you are so excited, sweetheart. <laughs> She's like, yes, I'm in the right place! Uh, John, John chapter 15, beginning at verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. Let's say that together. I am the vine. Now, that's Jesus speaking. He says, you are the branches. Nudge your neighbor and say, hey, branch. Hey, branch. You didn't know you were a branch, but you're a branch. He said, he who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. Say fruit. fruit. Okay. How much fruit? Much. much. Mucho. A lotto. A lotto. Is that Spanish? <laughs> I was close. I, I'm, oh, you speak Spanish, too? That's not? Oops. I butcher it all the time. I'm always coming up with stuff. And <laughs> but a lot just means a lot. There you go. He says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire. Now, that's not really cool. And they're burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me, say if. Look at your neighbor real soft like say, you know, if's a big word. Go ahead, tell them, if's a big word. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Father, add your blessing, anointing to your word today. Lord, open our eyes and understanding. Yeah, I know it's going to be a kind of a sobering up time. But help us to understand the importance of bearing fruit and the danger of being cut off. We might bear fruit and look good for a season, but our disconnectivity will eventually show up and the rot will come to the surface. Help us today to guard our heart, our mind, our example, and our witness for your glory in Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Ladies, have you ever gotten a beautiful arrangement of flowers from your man? Raise your hand if you have. Isn't that? Whoa, my Lord. Isn't it wonderful? They give you that, mm, woo! They give you flowers, and man, you just, mm, mm. Take a, you smell that. Look at that. That's amazing, powerful stuff. Powerful, I tell you. Powerful. It smells good, doesn't it? 
Then that one that smells so beautiful. And then I won't smash it in your face. Then that, not, <laughs> then that smell, ladies, how many of you love just a mmm, mmm, and you give me like mm, those, those flowers are so special. Oh, honey, you did such a nice job thinking about me. Matter of fact, the people that like you to get these, uh, they actually add a packet of crystals with them. So that when you put them in water, here, take a smell of that. Isn't that good stuff? I won't smell. Or what? What? What's going to happen? Yeah, I'm not afraid. Smell that, isn't it? Mm, beautiful, isn't it? Mmm. Mmm. There you go. You don't believe him. She looked like he didn't know what he's smelling. So, I mean, these are great. But ladies, have you ever thought about it? They handed you a bouquet of death. Because... They're cut off from the vine. So they're going to look real nice for a little while, but then we just got these this morning, and, and look at already what's happening. Minnesota, yes, I am. Look, I mean, it's already starting to wither. It's already jacked up. And the ladies were sitting there like, oh, they're so precious. And we smile, and we take them in the house, and we got it down. We'll cut them at an angle. So, you know, if you cut them at an angle, and you put them in a bottle of water, they'll last. Mm. Precious, isn't it? We'll put them in that water. And they gave you this packet of crystals to add to the water so that you can prolong the inevitable. Universal crystal clear. You add this to the water, and somehow it preserves the dying process. So after a few days, you change the water, and you realize they're not brightening up. They're dying. So you have beauty, but for a short season. Now, guys, hope I didn't ruin the gifts you give. But that's what we do. We give a bouquet of dying ornamental flowers. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Now, what that means is, as long as the flower or the branch is connected to the vine, it has life. But the moment it is severed in connectivity, death begins to take place. Slowly, but surely. Eventually, the rotting effect of the decay of death comes in. It doesn't matter how many packets of crystal you have. It doesn't matter. You can trim these bad boys till you've got nothing but the tops left. Eventually, they're going away because they were disconnected and cut off from the vine. Jesus said, if we abide in him and he abides in us, then we are able to bear much what? Fruit. We're able to produce something of beauty in the earth through our lives in connectivity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what does it mean for us to abide? Our life, if we are not careful, can become like this bouquet of flowers. We can look good for a little while. Mm -mm -mm. We can smell good for a little while. But shortly thereafter, death will always begin to set in. I don't care how much crystal you use. I don't care what you do. These flowers right here, no matter what any of you do, these are going to perish. Okay? Because they are cut off from the vine and the source. Jesus, I believe, is making a very important statement to the church and to his people and even to us today. That when we become disconnected, we begin to die. Now, I want to talk to you today about the things that we, dis get, we get disconnected in. The first thing we get disconnected in is personal prayer. Now, I know what you're thinking. I pray every day. And it looks something like this. God bless this mess and make it food. Amen. Or... For the spiritual ones, I rebuke these calories in Jesus' name. I'm going to eat a tub of ice cream and it's not going to affect my frame. You know, I'm sorry. You can pray that all day long. Eat a tub of carbohydrates and it will go exactly where it's going. 
in this region. Okay? So a lot of times our personal prayer life is limited to a blessing at a meal. Or we've gotten in horrific trouble. We've got more month left at the end of the money. You know what I mean by that, right? More bills than you got money to pay. And all of a sudden we panic, oh God, would you hear my prayer? We get, oh my Lord, we get all emotional with it. We flip on the tear duct and somehow we hope God will hear everything we're saying. But the Bible says in that passage that we just read, he said, if you abide and I abide in you, he said, then you're able to pray and get results. So most of God's people run around praying in a state of disconnect, then leaving frustrated because they're praying out of a connected relationship with the Lord. Now that's deep. So your personal prayer life has got to be more than just sitting at a meal uh, and saying, God bless this and you know, take the fat out of this and do all that. It has to be a relational daily connectivity where you are constantly aware that God is with you. Where you're constantly in communication. God doesn't just want to hear from you when you've got a need. So many people treat God like he's Santa Claus sitting on that seat at Christmas time and they go to him and they flop out their list and they give him, you know, oh, I, you know, great God in the sky. I, I, I want A, B, C, D, and if you don't have E, well, I'll just take F, G, and, uh, you know, God, you've been a, God, been a good boy, I've been a good girl, and I don't do anything wrong. I, you know. Could you imagine if you were the Santa Claus? You've never seen, you've not seen that person all year long. And now they're on your lap asking you for all kinds of things. God, I think, sometimes is the same way. We've not spent any time with him all year long and let a tragedy come and we're the first ones to run to his feet. If there is a disconnect in your personal prayer life, it will show up in your plant life. If you are disconnected in personal prayer, you can have a Christian fragrance and you can have the, oh, praise God, you know, I'm blessed, 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 oh, man, oh, God's so good, oh, my goodness, David. But eventually, your rot is going to show up. Nudge your neighbor and say, don't let your rot out. Don't let your rot out. Some of you take it however you need to take it today. But personal prayer is important. Personal worship is important. That's time. What is personal worship? An attitude of thanksgiving. I'm not saying you're driving down the road, hands flailing in the air, waving them like you just don't care and all this other kind of stuff. I'm saying, do you have an attitude that is thankful for what you have and where you are instead of one that always complains about what you don't have? Yeah, I knew we'd all be quiet today. That's all right. I know no one in the room is sitting beside a complainer today. I know you're not. So that's good. But if you are, is your eyes okay, Pastor Marcel? <laughs> Didn't you do enough to yourself last night? Mm, mm, mm. But personal worship is not about you riding down the road and singing your song. It's about the attitude of worship and thanksgiving that is grateful for the fact that, you know, how many of you got up breathing this morning? Okay. Those that didn't raise your hand, somebody must have performed CPR on you this morning to get you up. So then you should be grateful that someone had enough thought to pound you on your chest and blow in your mouth. <laughs> See, we, we, we get this stuff all mixed up. We, we, we don't get thankful. We complain about everything. <laughs> you got food on your table. You've got heat in your house. You've got water running. I mean, you just don't understand. My pipe's frozen this weather. Oh, dear Lord, it is not going to last. It is fixable. But great God, we get stuck in all this crazy stuff. Have a life of personal worship because when you don't, your disconnectivity will start to show up. And it normally starts to show up in the complainer, the nitpicker. As Pastor Marcel would tell us from last week, the nagger. I mean, I'm just, isn't that what? 
You're good? Praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. But when you are disconnected in your thankfulness and in your thanksgiving to God, it's going to show, oh, you might be able to fool some people, but eventually, rot's coming. Now, not only is it applied to your personal prayer, to your personal worship, but it also applies to your personal word. Yes, you need to be a man or woman of your word, but you know most people don't even know how to quote Scripture because they don't memorize Scripture. John 3, 16, most people fumble with that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You say, hey, that's real good, preacher. You got prepared for that before you came in. What's verse 17 say? For God sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but through Him that the world might be saved. How about Isaiah 41, 10? Fear thou not, for I am with you. I'm not doing this to try to show... You ought to have Scripture in your heart, David said. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. The danger today is many Christians cannot quote a Scripture. They don't have any of them hidden in their heart. You can fake it but so long, but eventually your rot will show up. Jesus said when you're connected to the vine, you will produce fruit. You cannot be wordless. You have to have the Word of God. What is going to sustain you in the craziness of this life is not a pat on the back. It is going to be the Word of God that does not fade or fail. That's the only thing that's going to uphold you. And I'm not talking about the superficial thing that we walk around all the time, we put the big smile on our face and we're trying to be encouraged. I'm talking about the Word that sustains you when no one else is looking and you are by yourself and you are in turmoil and your heart is breaking over life. What is in the reservoir of your Word tank that you can go back to and remember what the Lord said in His Word? You have to have personal prayer. You have to have personal worship. You have to have personal word. But you also have to have corporate prayer. What is corporate prayer? Praying with more than just yourself. Praying with a brother or a sister, people that care. You see, we're not just here at Healing Waters because we just needed a place to build a building and buy more property and all that stuff. We are connected in the body of Christ so that we can find strength one from another because if we don't find strength, listen, sometimes you need to hear someone else pray for you instead of you praying for you. Sometimes the words of another person encourage you to know that someone else is pleading your case and someone else stood in the gap for you. Corporate prayer is a valuable commodity. What about corporate worship? Now, let me get... Pastor Marcel, Minister Pitts, come help me. Mason, come on up here. Grab Jacob and bring him up here with you. We're, we're, we're going to demonstrate some things. Don't drag him. I just said bring him. My Lord. Pick him up by his neck. Here, come. Come. <laughs> All right. You okay? You look like getting ready to wrestle somebody. Now, how many of you have ever been to a concert? Of any kind, okay? So at a concert, you might be jumping up and down. You might be spinning around. You might be waving in your, your arms in the air like you just don't care. Or you might be helping someone do it. You might be dancing your own little jig. You might do a combination of all of them. You, you are getting down at the concert. The music is going. Keep on going, fella. The music is going. It, it's, no, no, stay up here. Keep going. The music is going. And you, you're leaving up there. And you're like, yeah! Woo! Yeah! You're telling everybody. You're like, yeah! You know, you're doing your little dance. You're high-fiving everybody. You're not ashamed of nothing. But then you get into the house of God and you go. Well, if I hadn't sang that song, I'd have been more excited. I need you less, 
less than before. I need you less. Leave me alone. I want to go home. I need my cell phone. Get on Facebook. <laughs> I need media. I hate this song. I don't want to move. Don't ask me to pray. You will be wrong. Just leave me alone. Don't be my friend. I have a frown. I'm getting out of town. I need you more. You know, you say, well, I don't sing that. But your attitude does. It's amazing that you can go to a concert and you can get down, but you come into the house of God. My God, I hear. You know what? Here's what I don't understand. You can clap on beat at a concert, but you are terrible in church. <laughs> Here's the rhythm. And y'all are like... <laughs> but let the concert be going. No, you... You'll be down in the mosh pit. Folk jumping all over you. Somebody bumping you in church. Can't bump no harder than that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but isn't that amazing, anybody? We, we will act more engaged at a concert than we do at a time of worship well, we're supposed to come together as the body of Christ and we're supposed to be being excited about this Lord that we serve and we're supposed to be excited about being connected together with God. What, I mean, listen, your disconnect will always show up. It will always show up. You can fake it some of the time, but you can't fake it all the time. Your fake will always show up. Your rot will always show up. Not only do we need times of corporate worship, we need times of, step here with me guys, we need times of corporate word. What is times of corporate word? The preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, coming together to study the word of God. Why? Because you learn from other people. You learn from other lives. You learn from other perspectives. And you also need something that you cannot get. You, look, you can, you can have personal word, corporate word. Personal prayer, Corporate prayer. You can have personal worship and corporate worship, but there's one that you cannot get personally. It's called fellowship. There's no such thing as personal fellowship. You say, yes, there is. I stand in front of my mirror. That's called vanity, not <laughs> fellowship. Okay? What is fellowship? Iron sharpening iron. Proverbs said, as iron sharpens iron, so does one person sharpen another. Fellowship is coming up to somebody, greeting them, talking to them, and you know what? Taking time to engage. It's not a sprint to run through. How many people, woo, yeah, hey, good to see you today. So, hey, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, I got through. <laughs> Corporate fellowship is you taking time to get to know somebody. Good to see you. How you doing today? I love that tie. I appreciate it. You always look sharp. Your hair is all nice. All right, man. You know? It's fellowship. It's coming up. Hey, brother, I like that. Is that real gold? Fake gold? What you got? It's legit. It's legit? How do you say that in Spanish? It's good. It's good? He's supposed to know Spanish. Steroids? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just like, that's my son for all the first timers, so don't. Yeah, he told that kid he's on steroids. He's my son. He's not, okay? He just likes to eat food. <laughs> Fellowship is not you just sprinting through high fiving people and <laughs> pointing. Fellowship is you getting to know somebody other than yourself. And fellowship is more than you sitting there waiting for someone to come to you. Nobody, nobody talked to me at church today. Did you open your mouth? Yeah, get that sign off your forehead. 
on the sunset. What sign is he talking about? <laughs> that says, leave me alone. It kind of looks like this. You ain't talking to me. You know, you, sometimes we come to church and we act like we're on that public bus or that flight. You know what I'm talking about? When someone comes walking up, we go, Maybe if I don't make eye contact, they won't talk to me. But then I'll go and say, you know what? Nobody wanted to talk to me at church today. Oh, great God, healing waters. They say those strangers just family, but they didn't want to talk to me today. Take the sign off. Stop avoiding people. Your connectivity in the kingdom of God is supposed to bring you strength. It's not something you're supposed to run away from. You can't fake true fellowship. Listen. Your rot will show up. If you're not connected in the body, like Jesus said, abiding in him, he gave us the body of Christ, the church, to be connected to him and to each other for purpose. And you know what the great purpose is? That you don't die. That you don't wither away. That you don't waste away without fruit. That you're able to have more than a temporary ornamental sign that you once were living. Beautiful today, but two days from now, that's going to be nasty looking. Too many Christians look good on Sundays, but it don't stick. And so we defraud the kingdom of God. We make God look crazy. We're, what's amazing is the ones you find at church, they're like, oh, man, praise God. You know, hey, buddy, boy, I love you, man. Give me a hug today. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they'll be bad-mouthing Marcel, stabbing him in the back. Oh, but you loved him on Sunday. <laughs> Listen to me. God put us here for a reason, and that's to be legitimate, trustworthy, kingdom-minded Christians that love one another genuinely, authentically, without strings attached, and without running around. Listen. Thumper theology still says, if you don't have something nice to say, cut your tongue out. No, I'm sorry, that's not what it says. <laughs> if, you, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Sometimes it's good for some people to practice silence Amen. until you get your head straight. But we can't be disconnected in the kingdom of God. Hebrews 10, 23 says this and i'll start to bring the plane in and start to close in just a moment he says let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering because he who promised is faithful the lord who promised is faithful and let us consider one another what does that mean let us take into consideration the other person that we're on this journey with let us take into consideration what they need let us take into consideration how they feel now granted some people need to take the chip off their shoulder with the sign okay and, and that's a part of growing up and being mature in the kingdom of god okay but considering one another is being mindful of the other people on the journey then he says this we consider in order to stir up love and good works i don't feel like preaching today and somebody comes up to you, oh, you don't think I've had those Sundays? Oh, yeah. There's some Sundays I've walked in here and I said, I just want to go home and crawl underneath something. Because that's the kind of week with carrying all, I'm just, I mean, I'm sorry that that's, that's too transparent for you, but that's just being honest. There are some times that it just, the stuff just doesn't ever end and, and you're caring and you're pulled into circumstances, not just people in the church. But my phone number and everything's published for the community. There's people that call on us that don't even come to church here. But we love and we minister without strings attached. And sometimes I get in here and my body hurts. My head hurts. Stuff's going on. I'm frustrated. I'm doing my best to hear from God. And people make you mad and people irritate you. And you know people are running their mouth behind you, behind your back and all this other kind of stuff. And yeah, it's frustrating. There are sometimes I want to crawl underneath something or put a sign out that says, kidnap me. <laughs> but throw my phone away or they will track you. <laughs> so if I feel that way, then I know that 
any of us at any time can feel that way. I'm just honest enough as a preacher to tell you that and put my stuff out there and like it, lump it, leave it. I mean, I, I know some people, I can't believe he's that, you know, because after all, isn't he supposed to be a spiritual Superman? No, Superman even had kryptonite. But listen, when I feel that way, to have a brother come over to me and put his arm around me, and I'm just struggling, here for you, Pastor. and he's letting me know he's here for me, Any praying prayer, for me, hear my prayer. and to even pray for me at that moment, whatever the case, it brightens me and strengthens me. We don't just meet together just because we want to sit on green chairs on red carpet and look at a lighted screen and listen to music together. No! We are a community of believers, a family that is no strangers. We're family that picks each other up when they're broken, mends each other's wounds when we're bleeding, and loves one another and stirs each other up and says, you will not quit on my watch. And without that corporate fellowship, we fail. Without that connectivity in the body. Listen, some of you need to do something in the body of Christ instead of sitting on a green chair every Sunday. Be involved in an area of ministry. Be involved. My Lord, we need people in the parking lot. We need ushers. We need people to greet. We need people to teach. We need people all over the place. Step up. You know, don't always wait for somebody to come up to you and go, well, you know, I just, you know, Jacob, I was wondering, you know, I thought about, uh, well, if you might want to think about, could you, uh, well, would you might want to, if you come at me like that, ask some people around me how I respond. I say, spit it out. What do you want? Don't beat around the bush. Listen, don't wait for someone to come up to you and be like, oh, precious, will you be a, can you be a part of something in the church? Don't wait for somebody to come up to you. So you know what? I want to be involved and go seek somebody out and say, hey, here I am. I want to be involved. And if they don't call you back, you let me know and they won't be a leader anymore. That's tough, isn't it? Because you have to have this connectivity. And you know what? Leaders in the house, you have to foster it and do what you say you're going to do and be accountable and don't be wishy-washy. I know, I need to get off that, don't I? Stay on it. Stir each other up with love and good works to do something. Do you Listen, I've said it since we started in the old post office 16 years ago with a handful of people. I want us to make a significant imprint and impact on this community. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there have been opportunities and people trying to pull me different places and do different things. Yeah. But God's put us together for a reason. And we need to come together, stir each other up to good works. And finally, he says, and don't forsake your assembling it together. Don't forsake coming together. He said, all the more as you see the day approaching. What day? Look around you. Look at the craziness that's in society. Look at the craziness that's in their world. I need you. Well, that's going to sound like a Barney song now. But I need you. You need me, right? <laughs> you know, you break into a Barney song. But we need each other for strength. Because you know what? I need somebody in my ear when I feel my strength failing saying, get up, man, man up, get a grip on yourself because that's how I, I, I need, I don't need you being, oh, you poor pitiful pumpkin, poo poo. You know, I don't need that. Just be straight up and tell me, get up, shake it off, man up, and let's go. That's what I respond best to, okay? But others don't respond well to that. So we get to know each other in the body. I know if I go up to somebody and say, hey, man up, you're going to be, <laughs> okay so I, you know you got to understand that okay but we need each other if we don't have you can't have personal fellowship it's only corporate not forsaking ourselves assembling together as in the manner of some but all the more as you see the day approaching you can withdraw you can disengage you can choose to, you know what, nobody's just cut off. You choose to be cut off. 
you realize? You're as connected in ministry. You're as connected in lead. I'll say this to the leaders. You're as connected as you want to be. Don't blame somebody else for you not being in the loop. Here's one thing. Like, oh, I get so irritated. You know, we need to work on communication around here. No, maybe you need to work on communication. Everybody wants to blame somebody else for communication. Well, what are you doing with your mouth? Oh. I'm not going to hit you. Don't hit me, Dad. <laughs> Stop it. He is not. <laughs> Listen. I'm never one that likes excuses and blaming everybody else. I don't like that. Okay. Well, you know, I wouldn't be this way had somebody not done this and done that. No, stop doing that. You can withdraw, you can choose to be cut off, and you can still maintain the look for a little while, but rot is coming. And Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, you're going to produce fruit. But it's not going to just be ornamental fruit. It's going to be fruit that is going to be used for the healing of people. It's going to be fruit that can be tasted, trusted, and tried, and it can bring triumph in the lives of other people. People are looking for more than just ornamental Christians that have fruit today and it's vanished tomorrow. Listen, Paul wrote to Timothy. I'll close with this if you'll play me something. Thanks, gentlemen. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, listen, in the last days, perilous times are going to come. He said, listen, people are going to be haughty, headstrong, full of wrath, envious, murderous, contentious, jealous, all these ugly attributes, disrespectful, dishonorable, all this stuff. And then he says, they're going to have a form of godliness. Wait a minute. They're going to have all this mess, but they're going to have a form of godliness. He said, they're going to have a form. Look up here. They're going to have a form of godliness, but they're going to deny the power thereof. They're going to have the look, but they're not going to have the connection. And he said, from such people, turn away from. We don't need, in this community and surrounding area, we don't need a church or a people that have the look, but without the connection. You know what? The look without the connection only produces hurt. But God's called us to be a place of healing. The only way we can do that is to have the look that is a connection so that people know there's a place you can come. If you're hurting, we'll hold you. If you're broken, we'll do our best to bind your wounds. But we're going to take you back to the root. If you're cut off, all you have is an ornament to offer. And as you can see, that doesn't last very long. The saddest thing in all my days is hearing of people that had a look. You, you can fake it for a while. You really can. Did you know that? You can fake it. Oh, yeah. And put the Jesus look on your face. Hey, brother, God bless you. Ooh, yeah, God is so good. <laughs> but eventually, eventually, that's going to show up. And here's, this is interesting. We just pulled these out this morning. What do you notice about that, the bottom there? It's hollow and it's dry. Just in a few short hours, that's starting to become brittle. It doesn't take long after you disconnect with the Lord and you disconnect with the body. That's why it's important to come together as a body. That's why it's important to come together in worship services and connecting with people. I don't want to be a church that just has a good look. I want to have the connection. You know what? And sometimes your connection will be solid but sometimes we might not have a, a look that maybe some people would want. But you know what? People can overlook the fact that you don't have their favorite kind of flower if your connection's right. You follow me? We might not have a style that fits to everybody. And I understand that. But you know what I do know? It doesn't matter if this is not right, if this doesn't have your rose on the front of it. If, it, if you know that there's a connection... You can go without the rose because you know they're connected. The people are connected. The church is connected to the vine. And there's life, not in the stem, not in the flower, but in the vine. 
That is what God is wanting us to be. Would you stand? Here's what I want you to do. We're going, I want you to help me do it, and we're going to try to move as quick as we can. It's going to be a little bit more difficult in this service. But I want us to practice connectivity. Okay? So it'll be a little bit more difficult, but that's all right. Ladies, I want you, ladies, all ladies, young, old, middle-aged, whatever you think you are, I'm not going to ask your age, okay? All the ladies, I want you to come get on this section right over here and just kind of stand right in here. All the ladies right over here. I know the guys are like, "Woo, we're safe. No, you're not. Actually, I'll do something different. All right, now here's what I want you to, because we're going to have a whole lot more. I want you to kind of press in like a giant huddle. Just kind of get in together. Everybody just push in. And when you get in, put your hand on the shoulder of the person in front of you and get everybody covered, all right? And ladies, if you need to come around, just kind of step around and kind of get in the group this way. Yeah, we'd have to stretch everybody out. Guys, Join them right over here. Fellas, right over here. You guys get them in a huddle. Bring them all in. Bring them all in. Come on, guys. Don't get scared of the middle. Ladies, while the guys get themselves together, I want you to know something. You need each other. You need each other in connectivity. You need each other in prayer. You need each other in worship. You need each other in life and in your walk. I don't want any of you to ever be disconnected. But you've got to work at being connected. And guys, listen to what I'm saying to them. You've got to work at being connected. Connectivity doesn't just happen. No light ever plugs itself in. If it does, get rid of it. Okay? Just telling you. You've got to work at connectivity. Yes, the Word of God's important. Yes, worship is important. Yes, personal prayer is important. All those things are important, but it has to come out of good, godly connectivity because life begets life, begets life, begets life, and it goes on, and your life is a light to other people. Gentlemen, you've got to connect with each other. You've got to stop running from each other. You've got to stop acting like you're strong and you've got everything figured out. I've talked to many of you. You don't have it figured out. Okay? You've talked to me and you probably know I don't have it figured out. So we've got to be transparent with one another. We've got to be able to say when we're hurting, when we're struggling, pray for me. And you know what? Guard that confidence. That's right. Amen. If you tell me you're hurting, the last thing I need to do is put it in the bulletin or on Facebook for everybody to say, hey, y'all join me in prayer. I'm praying for uh, Marcel Berrios. His wife's going to kill him this evening. <laughs> You know, or something like that. You know, you've got to be open with one. You've got to connect with one another. You can't run away from being with each other. Connectivity, as I just told them, is something we have to work. So here's what we're going to do. I want us to pray for the people around us. And then on the heels of that prayer, I'm going to give you just a minute or so, and I want you to encourage the people right in your immediate circle right there. And we're going to do that. And we're going to practice connectivity today. Father... Here we are today. I thank you for these women. I thank you for these men. I thank you for the connectivity of the kingdom of God. I pray, Lord, that you would touch these men, enable them to to lay down at times the facade that we put up, the machoism that we put up, the, the pride that sometimes we put up, and help us, Lord, to be able to reach out one to another and to love one another, to stir each other up to good works, and, Lord, to move forward being a beacon of light and of health to each other and to the community. We don't want to be ornamental men that have no grounding in the vine. We want to be grounded in the vine, which is Christ. We want to be grounded in the body, one with another. So God, I pray for these men. I pray, God, that you touch these ladies. Undergird them with the strength of your hand. Enable them, God, to connect one with another. Not to ever run from each other. To confide in one another. To pray with one another. To encourage and exhort one another. Lord, help all of us to catch each other when we're stumbling, to encourage one another when we're faltering, 
to have eyes that go beyond the selfishness of our own gaze, of our own mirrored reflection. Help us to see others, to reach out to others so that we might all finish well. Help us not to have a form of godliness, but no rooting whatsoever. Help us to have the look, but also, God, help us to have the link to the power of God that comes through the body connected to you in word, in worship, and in connectivity together. Help us to be men and women of prayer, men and women of connectivity, that you might be glorified. I thank you and give you glory. Help us to abide in the vine together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now listen, before you get out of that little huddle, your benediction is this. Grab as many as you can in the next 60 seconds. Hug them, give an encouraging word, and let's practice uplifting each other. Go ahead, guys. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Glad you're here, babe. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Biggin. Love you, buddy. Yeah, we do. We grow them pretty large. Is that chicken manure?